So how did it make you feel? Most of you would say terrified or creeped out like something was unfamiliar with something which should have been familiar. It was an uncanny experience. Welcome to the uncanny valley. The uncanny valley is a dip in emotional response where you see something that resembles a human and it shows some degree of human emotions or actions but something seems off about it and thus your brain registers it as a threat and makes you feel scared. This concept was proposed by a Japanese robotics professor Masahiro Mori in 1970. Mori proposed that we feel greater affinity for artificial humans as they become more realistic. But when they are almost perfectly human, slight differences creep us out and our affinity for them drops. As to why us humans are scared of such hyper-realistic machines is mainly because it is not clear to us whether they have intentions. One possible evolutionary reason for our repulsion to such robots is that any irregularity in a human-like form might indicate illness and we may be hardwired to recoil to prevent the spread of diseases. In November 2004, two films intended as light entertainment were released to very different receptions. The Incredibles was one of the most successful movies in history. The second movie, The Polar Express, which used motion capture and computer graphics to produce an animation whose characters look almost human. The Polar Express received a critical panic. One reviewer suggested its characters were so frightening that the film should be subtitled The Night of the Living Dead. The characters in Polar Express looked so real and human that our brains registered them as real real life people but somewhere deep inside we knew something was off about them since they were not actually humans. Thus the Polar Express fell right into the uncanny valley. While the Incredibles although resembled humans but had such cartoonish proportions that our brains didn't register them as any sort of human but a cartoon version which we knew wouldn't harm us in any way. Then the question arises, are all robots creepy? Not exactly. The virtual assistant Siri, which many of you probably have in your phones right now, doesn't at all creep you out. Nor does Amazon's Alexa. Alexa, how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three oh, quick maths. Okay. That's not a morning person, but Echo definitely helps him wake up. The king goes Alexa, alarm off. We all know about Japan's love for robotics. You visit the country and you're greeted by robots everywhere. Robots in restaurants, robots in hospitals, robots dancing, robot dogs, robot walking the ramp dressed as a bride, and whatever this is. So it's clear that not all robots make us feel uneasy. It's only those where maybe its proportions are way too off or it doesn't smile properly or its movements are stiff and jerky. Our subconscious then warns us of danger from the unfamiliar by making us feel fear or disgust. That trough in the wave, that's the uncanny valley. And that sadly is where Sophia, one of the most sophisticated AI in existence, falls. We are of course becoming more accustomed to robots and avatars in everyday life, between games like Last of Us and movies like Avatar, we see computer generated images of people all the time. Final Fantasy no longer triggers unsettling feelings in young viewers who are used to games like Crisis and Witcher. The shift in expectations have been going on all along and might well continue until technology is good enough to fool us. I have no doubt that we will have robotic maids like the Jetsons in future, but she should not look like Sophia. I would rather have a maid which looks like Knuckles, thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button if you did to show your support and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Alright guys, see you in the next video.